so in today's lecture we are going to discuss that uh, what kind of geological features or the changes a river erosion is doing in the surface of our earth okay so if you see that um, the processes uh, which are uh, done by the erosion processes what are the processes which includes hydraulic action abrasion and attrition three main processes and uh, chemical action is the next process corrosion processes so the hydraulic action and the abrasion processes together at the initial stage of a river it produces one landform or produces a feature that feature is called potholes potholes means it is pot the shape of the hole is some, the the depression which is making by the river is something like a pot i'll tell you that how it is happening this is a, a river surface through which the water flows and uh, the writing here it is a bedrock bedrock means it is a solid crystalline or solid hard rock so the water which is flowing over this hard rock surface what happen there would be some a, some kind of uh, 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 surface features or some irregularities on the surface of this rock that will uh, pick by this water okay so as a result what happened there is a small depression which formed on the surface a small depression which formed on the surface now this process is mainly done by the water only so we call it as a hydraulic action now what happens after this formation of a small hole there may be some small grains grains mean there are the sediments that may enter into this small depression and water is still again flowing through the surface as a result of flowing of this water which is getting into a small depression there would be small circular movements will take place so the water which is entering into this small is initially there is a very small process of uh, uh, initially there is a very small process of uh, a circular movement and that circular movement will take place place and this will increase the depression so when it increase the depression means the process now it is water along with the sediments so that together will increase the depression or the uh, cavity which is formed on the surface now again when it increases the depression then the the more amount of sediments will trap into this depression as a result what happened the erosion in the bottom part will larger compared to the neck part so as a result when we go down the depression on this part will be the cavity on the bottom part will be high compared to the uh, depression on the contact between the water and rock as a result when we see the depression it will be something like this it will have a narrow neck narrow neck and it will have a wider bottom portion so this structure what it is formed by the river is called a pothole so this potholes in later period by the process this will uh, this will become wider and wider and it may go deeper and deeper and it is actually a process of a erosion process of a river and that we call it as the first feature it is a pothole okay so that is first feature now the second feature which is produced by a river is a river valley as you know that the rivers are flowing through uh, the defined channels or the valleys so if this is the surface if you see here this is the surface through which the river is flowing at the at the point when there is a large amount of water by uh, rainfall or, or an ice melt uh, melting of ice the uh, water will start up flowing through small channels so this small channels we call it as uh, gullies rills or gullies because these gullies are not permanent this will come only during the time of high water influx so it will be there for some period of time then after the uh, monsoon after the rainy season this gullies will be uh, not having water but this processes of gully erosions will subsequently lead to a channel formation now what you are having here this channels small gullies which are formed now it's are connected and now this channels are formed 
so this kind of channels will produce a streams and this well defined streams flowing through a depression we call it as a valley so all our rivers which are flowing through this valleys in a definite channel so here if you see this is a valley in a uh, bedrock channel okay and these valleys will always have the different processes number one the process is the downward cutting so the valley will be more deeper and deeper as the time goes on okay so this we call it as the deepening of the valley same time there would be more number of gullies it will be forming and this will be increasing the length of the channels or the valleys so that process we call it as the valley lengthening at the same time this valley which is forming now right now the water is flowing on this valley this will increase the uh, width also so that process will also happening so what i think i'll show you a actual uh, image uh, what you can what you can go is that let us take an example of uh, uh, this river system correct so this is the same river what you have discussed yesterday uh, now where is the valley on this river the valley is if you see on the bedrock part the river which is flowing through the valley here so if i take a cross section across this so we can easily see where is the valley so the water is flowing through flowing through here so this is the valley through which the water flows correct if you go and come into the lower reaches where the flood plains are there i'm little bit extending it towards the hard rock or the high terrain so that you will be able to understand the um, the topography of this region see where is our valley our valley where the water flows is here so the water channel is still smaller now i'm exactly on the water channel the cross what you are seeing here it is here but the valley is wider okay and it comes down to the more wider then it comes down to the the high terrains high regions okay so this way the channel so this part there are what are the actions which are happening the depth of the valley increasing by the flow of water the width of the valley increasing and if you go into the uh, go into this particular part where the valley is the water is contributing okay so here if you see there is a small stream this joining and if you see the stream the stream will be somewhere it will be increasing its length also and as a wall the drainage basin what i discussed in the last lecture the drainage basin is where the water will be uh, collecting by a river so that process we call it as a uh, drainage basin now for this particular river if i see uh, there are two rivers one we can see here this is narmada river if you are able to see the cursor which is moving this is the narmada river and this is the tapi river where is the drainage divide the drainage divide is the hills what we are seeing here so if i zoom the hill here and make a 3d view of that you are able to see there are two rivers okay so one river which is narmada on the left hand side and tapi on the right hand, right hand side narmada is now flowing through the hard rock and tapi is now flowing through the alluvium the hard rocks are much higher so there would be small channels which will be uh, it, which will be developing on this um, this area and in, it may come into one point of time this uh, upward cutting of this tapi tributary will reach here because of the large amount of height difference between narmada channel and the tapi channel the flow of water from some tributary may took towards the tapi so this process we call it as a uh, river capturing simple process one channel from tapi there is a channel as we can see this channel is now extending its length now it's extended the length up to the top of the hill now there were another channel which was flowing towards narmada but what happened this both erosion processes mix mixed together and a result if i show you in the presentation uh, what it will happen there are there are uh, there are one river which is flowing here another river which is flowing here there is a tributary tributary means a small stream of this river which is cutting this hill okay now it reaches here and there is another tributary which is cutting this hill 
now what happens this hill it cuts up to here now this hill cuts up to here now this both of the cutting of the river joins together and the water from the one river either flow on this way or this may flow on other side so either of this will happen now these are two directions will change now water from this river or this channel will flow completely to this river this process we call it as a uh, river capturing so this kind of things are also possible in the uh, system and this is not a very simple process as a way i am explaining this also related to the uh, changes in the topography tectonic activities shifting and slipping yes okay um activities there are so many things associated with this okay but uh, this kind of things which are which has which are happening in the river system so that is the process of river valley now the next uh, next is uh, the river valley there are two type of river valleys and gorges and uh, uh, canyons canyons are uh, large deep river valleys which are having yes, a specific type of river valley which are having a uh, horizontally stratified uh, 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 sedimentary rocks or the rock types so this we see this all rock types are horizontal uh, perfectly uh, horizontal rock type so this we call it as a canyon and uh, the gorge is a gorge and both, both are same but canyons is a special type of that where the rocks are horizontal this is a gorge it's a large steep uh, eroded valleys produced by a uh, river now another erosional feature what we call it as a waterfall waterfall is also a erosional feature for example if you see here uh, now the river is flowing on the surface and the river is flowing through the surface of uh, three uh, two different layers this is one layer that is called s that is limestone another layer is called shale and uh, below that there is another layer that is again shale now when water flows through these three different varieties of rocks water will have different action on these different rocks for example this will be slightly uh, more resistant or more erosion processes are acting on one kind of rocks as a result what will happen there would be a differential erosion process so the water which was flowing on this part this part has completely removed very quickly so as a result the surface now becomes something like this so there would be a change in the height okay this much change in the height so water will start flowing in a uh, in the, into this uh, height difference so this we call it as a uh, waterfall and waterfall is also a another uh, process or another landform produced by the uh, water or running water is uh, there are number of reasons it is one reason is the different uh, difference in the um, one one process is the difference in the uh, difference in the uh, the uh, property of rock and there are other reasons there may be some kind of structural features we'll study it in later phase there may be a fracture and this block has moved down so now the surface is something like this so here it will produce a waterfall again so that that kind of different processes are again uh, possible in the case of a river system so this is the fourth feature so what we have discussed the first one we have discussed about uh, uh, potholes second we discussed about river valley third feature we discussed about gorges and canyons the type of river valley then we discussed about waterfalls then last one it is a stream terrace stream terrace is uh, uh, is a, again a erosional feature if you see here this large process large part of the river we call it as the river valley but where is the river now river is now flowing here and uh, what is this step like things this step like things what you are seeing here t1 and t2 we call it as terraces so terraces are produced by the erosion activity of the river if you remember my last lecture where i have said that river will be shifting within this valley if if the valley is in alluvial plain it will be major shifting and if it is not in alluvial plain if it is in the gorges or in the hard rock terrain then the lift shift would be limited but still the downward cutting will produce some kind of terraces but here i'll show you uh, another um, image 
Okay, so uh, for example, I am taking the same example. Uh, here, this is our Narmada River. So, Narmada River, what I am going to do is that I am going to take a cross section across this river. Okay, so here, this is the uh, cross section of Narmada. Let me take it perfectly on this plane, alluvial plane only. Okay, now if you see here, what you are able to see, uh, this is a elevation difference. See, the elevation here is 20 meter and here it is 30 meters. So there is a 10 meter elevation difference in this part. Okay, But here the elevation is uh, 10 meter almost flat and where the water flows, water flows here. Contrasting with that in the opposite part, if you see, there would be another. So this terraces here, here are getting terrace one here and uh, T1 here and terrace two here. But here we are getting only one terrace. We are not getting the perfect signature of the uh, this contemporary terrace. But that you will get in other part. For example, if I make a cross section here. Now you see the cross section. What you are able to see. We are able to see the Narmada channel on the channel. This is an island. And here we have one terrace and we have another terrace here. And we have another terrace here comparatively higher than this. And we have another terrace here at a 20 meter elevation. So this terrace is more sloping because of the sediments which are contributing from this. And there are a number of other rivers also. So that they are acting. But if you generally take this height, that becomes somewhere around 20 meter. And there is one more level on the uh, right hand side. So this kind of processes that we are producing, what we call it as the terrace. And if you remember my first lecture where I have discussed about the, uh, the, the Wasat Bridge, where I have discussed that the buildings which was created and all that buildings they have created in the first terrace. That is what the trouble what they have done. That is the terrace one. That is the recent terrace. And the bridge where we are uh, right now connecting that bridge, that is in the terrace two. And that is um, very occasionally what we can reach up to terrace two, or it is only possible in a very high floodings. And in the terrace one, it is a very normal, very active part of the river. Correct. So that is the terrace. So what are the different uh, features what you discussed? We discussed about portholes. We discussed about uh, uh, river valley. We discussed about uh, gorges and canyons. We discussed about waterfalls and we discussed about the stream terraces. So these are the five main features of uh, rivers what we see in the system. OK, so uh, now uh, this is a, a same uh, picture what you have already discussed in the image. Now erosion processes we have seen, erosion features produced by the river what you have seen. Now the next is the transportation process. Transportation process means when the river erodes something from the surface, now that material needs to be transported to the lower, lower part of the river or the downstream side of the river. So that Transportation processes have done by the river in three categories. The three categories are called the bed load, the suspended load, and the dissolved load. What is these three types? Bed load is means the river is plucking the large sediment, but it is not able to pick it from the surface. As a result, what it will do, it will either roll the sediment or the, the, the rock or small rock sizes or the gravel size particles or it will slide the material something like this. Okay, So it will either roll the material or it will either uh, plug the material, uh, slide the material or it will jump if it is something, uh, something, um, uh, sorry, if it is something uh, able to plug the jump. So these three processes will be happening either rolling or sliding or jumping. So this jumping process we call it as a saltation process. So these three are the main processes by which the river transport material. What you hear is the rock surface and this is the water level. We are seeing a cross sectional view of the river. So these processes, three processes what we do, this is called a bed load. It is done by rolling, sliding, and saltation process. Then the rivers will transport some material in suspension. Suspension. These smaller materials, what you are seeing here, these all are the suspended materials. Okay, that remains in suspension. 
that the size of the particles are small so the river is capable to get it from away from the surface to pick it from the surface so it pick it the pick the things and it will transport uh, within the water which will be transported as a suspended load and the third one it is the dissolved load the dissolved load is what we may not be able to see the uh, the grains but um, uh, when we filter the water we will be able to see the materials which are dissolved in the water so these are the three different ways the the sediments transport the by the uh, river now erosion and the features and the transportation what are the different mode but uh, and the third activity is the deposition transportation doesn't make any features it rather um, transport one material from one part to another part but the deposition of the river which makes different features okay deposition means all these materials which are transporting either in suspension or in transportation or in uh, bed load or in dissolved load it will be depositing somewhere in the course of river system ultimately everything will be it submit uh, depositing to the sea but in between there are so many other areas where it will be depositing for example if in a flood if you see that the flood water coming into our regions after the flood retreat if you see there will be a thick layer of sediment depositing what we clean usually after the flood so that is a sediment deposited by the river so that materials mostly remains in suspension this bed load materials will not come that materials comes which mostly on suspension material that is what the fine clay is material what we get in the uh, we get after the flood now deposition of a river which uh, starts from the headland region to middle land region to the uh, mouth region so this deposition will be happening in different regions one we call it as an alluvial fans so alluvial fans are cone shaped accumulation of stream deposited in the base of the hill and flood plains is in the middle region where the sediments depositing on either banks of the river so there are three different varieties of banks either flood plains either convex convex and there is one feature we call it as a natural levee this is a comparatively elevated surface towards the river then there is deposits within the channel that we call it as basically bars sand bars or sometimes it is a point bar sometimes it is a channel bar or sometimes it is a uh, island or last one it is the delta which is depositing at the mouth of the river okay so we are going to see one by one first one we are going to see an alluvial fan so alluvial fan is something like this okay so this is the hilly terrain and if you want to see the hilly terrain here what i will show you so uh where are we right now we are right now in the uh, himalayan terrain where the himalayan uh, because uh, the other part in gujarat and other part we are not able to see the alluvial fans right now because these all alluvial fans are now below the flood plain so the the flood flood plain sediments the loose sediments or the overbank deposits or the flooding deposits which are all covering the sediments so all these things are below the surface we are not able to see but in the himalayan rivers if you go we are able to see this alluvial fans what you are seeing here this is indus river indus river flowing on the leh leh is a well known tourist place so i i hope you all understand where the location of leh is uh, if you see in, in on our indian map okay so okay so this is the map of our india and we are here somewhere on the himalayan terrain and the leh valley okay so leh valley if you see see these are all the these are all uh, sediments which are okay these are all the sediments or the water streams which are flowing from the the hilly terrain and when it flows to the hilly terrain and after it ending here so it is depositing most of its sediments which are transported by the river at the foot hill this is the part where the valley ex valley starts so this is almost a plain surface and when it reaches the plain surface the river is not capable to carry all these materials as a result what will what will happen the river will deposit all these materials in the front part of the uh, front part of 
the hill terrain. So see all these deposits are depositing and as a result, this is the river which flows, but these surfaces are formed by a alluvial fan. So we sometimes call different terminologies for this. We call it as a, if the slope activity is more, we call it as a colluvial fans. If it is a river activity is more, and we call it as an alluvial fan. So the number of different terminologies are there, but ultimately the process is the large amount of sediments which are transported by the river are depositing in the foothill. See this, this part, if you see, this is a very good alluvial fan. And we'll, I, I hope you are able to appreciate the different generations of alluvial fans also. Now you see this river which was flowing here, now it started flowing on this channel. So it is like uh, the river which is uh, waving from one end to another end, the movement of river is there. Okay, river must be flowing somewhere on this part, now it has started flowing on this part. So number of areas where it is changing the path. So this process, this is called a alluvial fan. You can see that in the simple in the Leh Valley, there are number of alluvial fans are there. All these small tributaries which are contributing the river, everywhere you are able to see the alluvial fans. Some of these alluvial fans are already stabilized. Stabilized means there are there is a growth of uh, uh, plant. See, this uh, this is a very fertile land. So people started using it for some amount, some kind of cultivation so, or it is a normal grassland or something like that. Okay, so this uh, processes are so this would be an older one and these are all active alluvial fans so this is one feature second one it is a flood plain to see the flood plain uh, let us go to our area uh, narmada only where we have already seen so that is our flood plain So this is the same Narmada region. If you see here, okay, it's better. I think we'll be able to see the. See, this is the area where the uh, Narmada River is uh, flowing out of this Kevadia, uh, Kevadia colony, and all this part we call it as a flood plain. Flood plain means it's relatively flat land, and if you see Narmada, then there is another river. This is um, uh, our uh, um, Mahi River. Then we have Sabarmati. So all these rivers together, it makes a uh, flood plain. And if you see the elevation or the the cross section of all these rivers we can see these are almost flat terrain see the variation of the height is from 40 meters to see the around 30 meters all this area this is around 83 kilometers what you are looking at and there is only a 10 10 uh, meter difference in the height so that means this is almost um, and one river comes here another river comes here and third river comes here so this flat almost flat land which is produced by all these rivers all these rivers together we call it as a flood plain and within this flood plain all these rivers are changing its path also if you want to see how it changes the path i'll show you a uh, river so this is another river this is in um, uh, bihar uh, koshi river you must have heard about the Koshi River and few years back during a high flooding season, the Koshi River have completely shifted its channel. So this is the scenario of Koshi River in 1984. It was something like this. It was flowing something like this. And in 2018, if you see, you can see that there is a lot of changes in the path of the river. See, look at here. This is one point bar, 1984, and this is now detached and there is a new channel which formed. See the river is flowing only single channel. Now 1884, if you see that it is flowing on different channels. So this kind of lot of changes are actually happening in the river. So if you see the series of changes, what it is happening on this river, just look at the stream. So how much changes are there? There are so many areas where changes are happening in the river system in a time series phase. Okay. So this is around 40 years of story what I'm talking about. Now we can imagine the life of the earth surface it is 4.5 billion years and uh, large to so many so many millions of billions of years the surface processes are changing and uh, this is actually creating lot of topographical changes in the surface of the earth
okay so that is um, flood plain now another important feature and i, I talked about uh, uh, this is this you have already discussed so this is the river and the area where adjacent to the river uh, the river deposit the the sediments during its flooding we call it as a flood plain and uh, natural levees are slightly elevated points on the flood plain towards the water so this is a river channel if you see this is a river channel and uh, this surface what it is slightly elevated uh, than the nearby flood plain i'll tell you why is this because when the river flowing through and river started overflowing the the, the banks what happens here in this part there would be a large amount of sediments in suspension or in saltation uh, that sediments will be there so river will not be able to flow it with that same energy what it is having in the channel at this part so as a result what happens it will deposit the sediments towards very closer to the channel the river channel existing channel so as a result that becomes slightly elevated and it may go away from here the size of the sediments and the amount of the sediments it decreases so as a result it will become gently sloping uh, away from the uh, streams away from the channel so this part we call it as a natural levee so this natural levee is uh, there are uh, um, artificial levees also what we prepare when you study the irrigation you will study the levee that would be constructing in the canals when you construct a canal the banks of the canal we slightly elevate from the nearby area so that the water will not overflow immediately so that we call it as artificial levee so we'll see the designs of that in the later phase and uh, last one which is towards the uh, towards the mouth the river will be depositing the delta so delta is uh, the all the sediments if it is not able to sediment deposit any of the sediments in the alluvial pans or if it is not possible to deposit the sediments in the channel or if it is not possible to deposit the sediments over bank then ultimately this will be depositing in the delta okay so we have discussed about uh, the deposits in the foothills deposits within the channel deposits in the over bank and the flood plain now one feature what we are to discuss is the deposits within the channel the uh, within the channel so these are deposits which are happening within the channel we call it as uh, bar deposits okay so bar deposits are the amounts of amount of sediments which are depositing within a river for example if you see all rivers any river if you take you will be able to see that if you see that uh, this is a this is a bend of the river okay and this river is bending here and you, yesterday if you remember that uh, the flow velocity should be maximum towards this end where the river would be cutting and the flow velocity would be minimum on the the towards the curvature as a result what happens the river will start depositing on this bend so the river which is depositing on this curve inner portion of the curve this uh, this deposits we call it as a point bar we call it as a point bar and if this deposits are forming in not in the curve but uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, in the sides of the river in a straight line we call it as a lateral bars okay sometimes the lateral bars would be uh, having an alignment which is perpendicular to the direction of the flow we call it as a transverse bars and the longitudinal bars something like that and if the sediments are depositing within the channel we call it as a channel bar and if it is stabilizing we call it as a island okay so islands are formed channel bars are formed point bars are formed so now this was formed as a point bar now this was now converting into a land okay so here we can see there is a deposit channel bar deposition is here here it is a point bar deposition so that kind of deposits are also uh, happening in the case of a, a river system okay so uh, we discussed about uh, the deposition of rivers in the alluvial pans we have discussed discussed flood plains we have dis discussed point bars channel bars and islands we have discussed and the delta we have discussed now one last thing about the river that is uh, oxbow lake second last thing oxbow lake sorry uh, river meandering river meandering and uh, oxbow lakes these are the results of 
uh, uh, river uh, erosion process. This is a feature produced by the river. So river meandering is nothing but uh, uh, when the velocity decreases from a, the, or the slope decreases, the river will not be able to flow in a straight line. As a result, the river will take a curved path. So this curved path produced by the river, we call it as a, a river meandering. So the same single river, if you see here, Narmada river I'm looking at. So this Narmada river in the upstream part, it is flowing through a straight channel. And when it comes to the lower portion where it is, uh, this is a flood plain, okay when it comes to a elevation difference and uh, as a result what happens the river now started flowing into an almost flat land and it is taking this curve paths okay this curvatures these are taking this curvatures which are taking by the river we call it as a meandering so this meandering sometimes what happened this meandering or the curvature of this meanders increases for example, the same Narmada River, I am looking at um, uh, Madhya Pradesh in somewhere around Hoshangabad. Okay, so here if you see, here if you see, this is a meander, same meander, okay, meandering river. Now this meandering river is flowing here. And if you look at this part, what you see here, you can see a small channel here. Okay, so it is what a older channel so once upon a time the river was flowing something like this flowing something like this and it started cutting and as a result of continuous cutting what happens after some time after some time the river started flowing through this channel so this portion, this portion of the channel which left out, so this meandering which left out by the river sometimes remains uh, some amount of water, stores some amount of water. So this water which storing in this kind of left out channels, we call it as a Oxbow Lake. But we call it as a Oxbow Lake. So Oxbow Lake is a, a channel which produced by or a lake which is produced by the meander cutoff. Okay. So earlier the river was something like this flowing through a curve or a meander and this meander neck which reduces its width slowly. It took so many years and once upon a time in a case of a major flood or something the meander neck which completely cut and it started flowing straight. As a result, what happens? The river started flowing left straight. So it left a curved path and that curved path, we call it as a Oxbow Lake. So that is again a river feature. Basically, we cannot say it as a deposit feature. It's a river feature. And this meandering and the meand Oxbow Lakes, I'm putting it here in the river depositional feature, but it is a river, large river morphological feature. Okay. So this is uh, from my side uh, for today. If you have any doubt, any, any questions, uh, we can discuss it for some time.